we would like to kick things off by thanking you, um, all of our contributors. There's contribution through code, there's contribution through writing documentation, hosting, SIG meetings, um, plenty of things. And I think that deserves another round of applause. There's plenty of people here. We also want to thank three people individually as they contributed the most commits um, to Basel Build and Basel Contrib over the past 12 months. Um, the first one should come at no surprise. Uh, can I hear a guess? Fabian, yeah. Fa Fabian, uh, unfortunately, uh, is not here. Um, but we will ship you one of these lovely Basel ducks, um, <laughs> Fabian. Um, and hopefully it helps you to debug uh, rubber duck some of your basal problems if you even encounter them. Fabian did a record number of 423 merged commits across these repositories. That's more than one per day. That's really amazing. Thanks, Fabian. <laughs> he was slightly beaten by a renovate bot. So that's, that's a goal for next year, I guess. The second person is Alex. Um, so Alex, thank you. Um, I have this duck for you. <laughs> Many contributions to Basel Lib and Rules OCI, uh, but really all around Basel. Thank you so much. And the third one is Tomasz Pasternak. Um, where are you? I saw you earlier. <laughs> I will not throw the duck. You have to come to the stage and get it. <laughs> Thank you for your contributions to <laughs> IntelliJ ID. And now I want to take a moment to talk about the things we achieved in the past year and that we want to deliver in the next year, maybe, um, starting with dependency management. Um, as you know, um, we spend a whole lot of time on BZL mod, and uh, one of the achievements that we implemented last year is the vendor mode. Um, it covers multiple scenarios, so let's assume you're going to step on a plane to BaselCon, and you want to build during that long plane ride with Basel, and probably you don't have a Wi-Fi connection on board or not one that is good enough to, to keep building. So you want to fetch your dependencies beforehand. The vendor mode allows you to specify a set of targets and download all required dependencies for that. There is an obvious caveat here. If you decide during the flight, oh, let's, let's try this with a different Basel version or let's try to build this other target and suddenly um, you don't have the dependency. So you have to make sure you understand what you download. But you can also go one step further and download all the dependencies. That's quite big for some repositories and when they're done. Especially useful for fully offline CI and release builds. You can then go one step further from there and um, check them in, but you don't have to check those in. Um, the, the vendor dependencies can also live outside of your source tree. For example, you could have one separate repository with all your vendor dependencies in the company and the other repositories just referring to this one. We made several improvements to module.basal. Um, I'm going to mention two of them. One is include support, where if you have a large modular basal file and want to get a little bit more structure, avoid merge conflicts, you can include other module.basal-like files to, to have some more granularity. Include is only supported at root, so you can't create another graph out of include statements there um, to keep it simple. Uh, the use repo rule um, is mostly syntactic sugar and is meant for easier migration. Um, so you can reuse old workspace repository definitions such as HTTP archive in an easier way. We also built new watch APIs, um, added a little bit of correctness to Bazel so that uh, 
you can now re-trigger fetching and evaluation of repository rules when certain files or directories have changed. And finally, the new log file format, uh, thanks to Fabian, uh, is designed in a way to result in fewer merge conflicts and easier review reviewability. Um, we also provide a git merge driver for automatic conflict resolution there. Looking forward, um, we are wrapping up our work on Workspace. Um, with Basel 8, we disable Workspace by default. You can still enable it, but we encourage you to finally migrate if you haven't done so. Because in a couple months, we will rip out the support for Workspace from Basel, and then with Basel 9, we ship without Workspace support. That is also a call out to the community. If you own a library or a rule and haven't migrated to BCL mod yet, you should start now and add it also to BCR to make it easier for other people to migrate. We want to work on a shared repo cache. Um, the current repository cache is actually a misnomer. It's more like a download cache and we want to cache the actual um, contents um, after repository rule evaluation, and then the idea is to share this also across workspaces. Um, this can be especially useful on CI. Finally, we want to address supply chain security concerns um, by adding build provenance metadata to BCR. There's a couple proposals out there. Um, there will be a BF session um, where we will talk about this. Uh, the idea is that we have at the end some tooling that makes it easy to generate this metadata and then on the consuming side more tooling that helps to verify this metadata and I think this is an important topic for many. Um, go to the BF session if you want to learn more. Next area I want to talk about is remote execution caching. Uh, looking back, we added remote output service functionality that implements a virtual file system for build outputs. Um, so during the build, this is used um, for accessing um, inputs to actions that you want to run locally where those inputs have been generated by previous actions. And after the build, it can be used by humans or tools to access um, all the intermediate outputs of your build as well. Think about IDEs or debuggers or just a human inspecting the output tree without specifying upfront what they want to see and still benefit from what Build Without the Bytes gives them. There's a BB client D um, from Build Barn offers a client-side implementation um, of the remote output service and that can integrate with your existing Basel remote execution backend. The execution log um, can be used to debug uh, or understand why actions were executed and didn't return a cache hit. Um, sometimes the execution log used to be gigantic. Uh, it's still sometimes large, but it's 100 times smaller now with the compact format, and the runtime overhead is less than 3%. So it's more feasible to turn it always on and um, not have to hunt for these cases, scenarios where you don't get cache hits. Finally, we improved performance for large tree outputs. Um, there was a lot of low hanging fruit there. Um, we, we have spent some amount of time looking at these large outputs and trying to understand for each step what, what makes them slow, for example, with the execution lock, but also with uploading to remote cache, what's going on and speed this up. Looking forward, um, Basel now uploads um, the results of local actions to a remote cache in the background, potentially unblocking the execution of further local actions. And then finally, we addressed the most upvoted feature on GitHub, which is the garbage cache for a uh, garbage collection for the disk cache. And um, one note here is uh, in, in the discussion how to implement this, we switched from an offline mode to an online mode. Now we are back to an offline mode. So we will clean up the garbage during, in between Basel invocations, not during one invocation. We saw 
that the implementation that would do this online would add too much complexity and uh, too high performance overhead for the common case. Um, so we decided against it. We made with Basel 8 some improvements to build without the bytes interoperability. Um, for one, we improved how we handle um, eviction with remote caches. As part of that, we made sure that build without the bytes can handle scenarios where artifacts fall out of an HTTP cache. Um, secondly, uh, there was an issue with uh, SkyMelt and build without the bytes interoperability, sometimes leading to uh, minute long incremental builds. Um, we fixed that so that you can use both build without the bytes and SkyMelt at the same time and not lose out on build performance. And we plan to take the lessons that we learned during implementation of the disk cache garbage collection to other basal caches, while well, it's not really a remote execution area. Um, we want to apply these to the repository cache, to the install base, and the action cache. Handing it back to John. Thank you. OK. Um, so let's talk about build rules. Um, I think if you look back over the past year, you'll see there's been a huge amount of progress on moving code out of the native part of Bazel's code base into Starlark. Rules Python, rules Android, rules Java, rules Shell are all long-lived bits that have lots of tentacles into ancient Google lore that have been moved out into Starlark, often cleaned up in the process. Uh, we've also added auto-load functionality to allow, make it easier to transition from using native rules to using uh, Starlock rules. And the general theme here, there was a mention earlier about, uh, someone mentioned that uh, Blaze and Bazel are old code bases, there's a lot of cruft in there, we agree. And this is, I think, a demonstration of our commitment to moving that cruft out of the core of Google, making it easier to contribute to these since they're not uh, bound to the core. And you'll see other examples of this coming up. Um, some other interesting um, uh, rules uh, accomplishments, I want to give a shout out to, to the Protobuf team in Google, which owns all the code to uh, generate and, and consume Protobufs. Uh, now owns the rules for Proto. They've, they've uh, agreed to take that over, and I think that's a great example of the alignment of tool ownership and rule ownership. This is a principle we'd like to try to follow as much as we can, and this is a Google team with a lot of other things on their mind that's agreed that it's important enough for them to own this rule, and our team no longer has to, so I think that benefits everyone. Also, for Android, a huge amount of work. Android is uh, probably the most a uh, complex rule set in all of Bazel, native rule set and Blaze. Um, the, the team uh, working on that has done a huge amount of work to move that all out into Starlark, not only our team, but partner teams in Google. Um, uh, and in doing so, enable new functionality that wasn't there before, like mobile install v3 is a much improved version of mobile, mobile install. So you see more along these lines coming up, but I think this is a um, huge amount of progress on slimming down the, the core of Bazel and making it easier to contribute. So coming up in the following year, we're aiming to actually complete Starlockification. The asterisk there is, be, is uh, just denoting the reality that we will likely have to encapsulate some remaining native code, but in stable APIs accessed by providers that shouldn't get in the way of extension points later. So that's the goal, and that's a huge milestone that we're aiming to achieve this year. Um, earlier, uh, Bazel Contrib was mentioned. We aim to continue to move more and more rule sets into Bazel Contrib, allowing the community to fully own and participate there. And finally, Android, which because it's important to Google, we will continue to own our team. Uh, we're aiming to, for further improvements like deeper Java and Kotlin integration and refactoring to enable um, easier community contributions. Okay, so uh, again, on the, on the theme of getting the community more involved, it's really, really important to us that our extensibility mechanisms in Bazel are easy to use, uh, productive, and get, get the job done in ways that are important to the community. So we've made a lot of progress there. We're not all done yet, but some things to highlight include the build API, that is the way the Starlock languages talks about build. A lot of improvements there, the so-called legacy struct providers that are, that are um, 
left over from native code days have all been removed. All of the providers are now the more modern sort of object style. Uh, aspects, which are uh, important for a number of, as an extension point, can now propagate to target tool chains. It seems like a, maybe a fine point, but it's important to allow uh, multi-platform builds to work well. We introduced a concept called dormant depths. Uh, this is mostly for very large builds that under certain circumstances, like tests, for example, there may be a whole set of dependencies that are actually not needed. Um, and analyzing those dependencies, much less executing them, can be very expensive. So this is a mechanism to allow certain classes of dependencies to be uh, ignored in a safe and correct way. Uh, platforms and tool chains, those are concepts baked into a Bazel that make it multi-platform, I think that's one of our important differentiating concepts, have been upgraded and improved. We now have so-called platform-based flags that are now flags to vary depending on what platform you're building for. And a lot of the complexity related to, oh, this flag goes with that platform, that's a, a very messy thing to manage on your own. We acknowledge that and this concept enables you to improve it. Uh, later on, you're going to be hearing about a Google project, embedded systems project called Pigweed that I think has uh, served as a nice showcase for uh, multi-platform builds and also has helped us to improve our APIs considerably. So more shout out to uh, Ted, who I is going to give the talk on that later. Stardock is an important part of the extensibility story. You need documentation with your rules. Uh, Stardock was a kind of a kludgy thing and it had a lot of, uh, had maintenance issues. Stardock has been completely rewritten and in the process uh, there are a number of improvements involved and also slimmed down. The there's just a lot less code. And uh, we, we hear you, documentation can always be better. We're making some progress there. We've reorganized the documentation, especially around flags, to make it more accessible and, and uh, organize it thematically. So this is all last year and there's still a lot more coming. Um, uh, we're rolling out in Bazel a concept called symbolic macros. Macros are, you know, just in, in like all of programming languages, a kind of messy freeform concept. We're trying to uh, retain the power of the existing macros, but tame them in a way that makes them easier to use and consume. Um, so macros have constrained argument types. They're not just you know, stick anything in the arguments. Visibility control, very important if you're managing large code bases. And we're going to add later lazy loading, which hopefully will uh, make macros less expensive to use, especially if they're large. You'll hear a talk later on symbolic macros. Related to symbolic macros, there's a special instance of them called rule finalizers. Uh, we find they're often cases where you need to basically inspect uh, the, the entire contents of a package, rule finalizers, or a special form of symbolic macro that will enable you to do validations of various kinds, if you wish. Um, uh, and finally, uh, types for Starlark, interesting topic. Um, uh, there's a design doc on GitHub. Um, we welcome feedback on that. There's a lot of work still to be done to incorporate it in the code base, but it's uh, obviously important to enable uh, maintenance of large Starlog code bases, and we welcome your feedback on that. All right. Finally, let me talk about what I'll call the kernel of Bazel. That's the, the, the core system uh, written in Java that we maintain largely. I want to highlight the fact that we've, over the past year, we, we debated what this number actually is because it depends on how you count, but it's actually probably quite a bit larger, more like 250K lines of code um, have been deleted. And this is code in the kernel the stuff that you have to build every time you build Bazel that's gone. Uh, and we want to continue to slim the, the kernel of Bazel down. Uh, and uh, you'll see, I'm sure, more along those lines in the coming year. So some of the ways we've slimmed down the code base include star lockification, native rules are out, the star doc updates I mentioned earlier slim down a bunch of code, there's a whole bunch of other simplifications. And it's to our advantage to keep Bazel from growing into a big, messy, Java the Hut kind of code base. Um, uh, because we need to use it internally in Google in a nimble way. So this is an area that we're continuing to invest in. It's important not only to Bazel's future, but also to Blaze's future. So you know, look, look, uh, look for us to continue to stay on a diet in the coming year. Um, we enabled uh, Bazel to use JDK 21. This was an important step forward to enable such things as virtual threads, project loom, async execution. Those are all features that were simply not available in earlier versions of Java, now we and your, you as contributors can use those features. There are also a number of GC improvements that have improved our memory consumption and speed. Uh, we moved the worker API, which we realized is an important sort of separable piece of the code base, into its own repo so people can more easily understand and uh, 
develop their own workers. Um, right, uh, so here are some things that are coming up in the future. Um, uh, we're very excited about a set of related pieces of work here that you'll, you'll start to hear more about. One thing is what we're calling project specifications. And the idea is to uh, define the set of source files your project typically uses, the things that are typically edit, edited together as a unit. Um, and I'll, I'll say more in a second about why that's useful. We're also looking to tame flags. We know that flags are, there are a lot of them, they're all over the place, they're confusing, they're complicated. Um, we can't make them all go away imme immediately, but what we can do is um, uh, provide functionality that enables you to use flags together and abstract away from the details of flags. We have the notion of flag sets. I, I know it initially seems like yet another abstraction, but we think this is actually an important step to slimming down the set of flags as to abstract away from individual flags into a set of flags that are used together. And now when you associate flag sets with projects, you have a sort of a well-defined set of concepts that are used for a particular team, a particular app that are used together. And, and by and large, we want to get to the point where users don't actually see or manipulate individual flags. Maybe experts do, maybe uh, a team will define a set of flags, but users don't need to know about them. So together, these concepts allow uh, what we're calling analysis phase caching. And the idea is to um, not just cache at the action level, but actually cache uh, intermediate states of analysis and reuse them later. And if you're able to uh, avoid uh, gratuitous divergence of the analysis phase based on, say, the set of files you're using or the set of flags, we think we can cache a lot better. So this is still quite experimental, but we expect it to, to see more later this year. And that could, in particular for incremental interactive builds, provide a big performance improvement. So stand by, you'll hear more about that in the future. Um, we're continuing to do work on slimming down, that's another instance of this theme, uh, Blaze and Basil's memory footprint. So we've done work to decrease peak and retained heap. Uh, you'll see more along, uh, along those lines in the future. And finally, we're working on asynchronous action execution, which enables us to more efficiently handle background I.O. during action ex execution. So that's all coming up. We're, we're excited. If you're interested in any of those, come talk to us and hand it back. To Thanks, John. As you know, we created the first release candidate for Basel 8, next major version. Uh, we need your help. Please help us by testing. Um, just use Basel ISC uh, with use Basel version equals last RC. Um, when you encounter any issues, report them, GitHub, Slack, um, Basel Discuss, or if you test them today, um, come to us and report them live. That's also fine. Uh, we really need your feedback to make sure that Basel 8 is the best Basel we ever released. Um, you can also use Basilisk with uh, the bisect option to figure out which exact commit broke you to understand what's going on, and that helps us to um, fix any issue. With that, uh, all that's left is Q&A. Uh, you said that you aim to complete stellarification of the rules, and uh, I have a nasty one. What about rule CC? Well, that the, yeah, that's the, the the monster lurking in the closet. I mean, it's it's the last piece of work, uh, and that's probably an area where we're not going to be able to move every bit of CC related code entirely out of the code base. Maybe at some point. So I I carefully ca added the caveat that. Complete means we've encapsulated in stable APIs uh, anything that we think is not likely to change in the future. So uh, yes, rule CC is a big focus for the coming year. And expect Thank you. to see progress there. Hi, guys. Um, thanks so much for the change for the last year. Um, I do notice that uh, from BaselCon last year, we did talk a little bit about telemetry for Basel, right? And that was not really mentioned, and I don't know if there's any update on that. Right, uh, we, we don't really have an update, to be honest. I, uh, telemetry is just a hard problem. You know all the privacy concerns that are around that. We discussed it in the BUF session last year. Um, I do think that actually uh, a potential foundation 
um, could help us here, setting up some infrastructure which is not backed by Google and uh, where there's a little bit more trust. So I hope we make some progress on that next year. Thank you. Hi. Um, one of the things that we felt that is slowing down a little bit the community moving to Bazel mode is the presence of big projects like TensorFlow that they still didn't move to Tensor to Bazel mode. So there is some work going on there. We're also trying to do our part. But do you know, do you have any insight if there is some coordination, some better way to participate in helping this? Or if something is happening already? <laughs> I, I encourage you to talk to Shudong in the BZL mod BOF session. Shudong is sitting there in the back. Um, so he is the BZL mod expert. Okay, thank you. Why don't you go over there? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. He's been starved. <laughs> uh, are there any plans to provide a more like batteries included Bazel experience for the, all the tools that experts know about and use commonly, but aren't part of like the core Bazel install? Stuff like the exact log parser or Gazelle or things like that. Just either integrating them with Bazel Core or providing like breadcrumbs from the core experience for people to find about, to like, discover them? We, we don't have any plans. I mean, no one is stopping you guys stepping up and doing such a thing. I, I think this is an excellent opportunity for the community to decide, okay, this is how we should bundle things together. And um, yeah. distros. <laughs> I mean, that, I think that if it's done in a controlled way, it would be great. I mean, but it's really hard to know what, you know, there might be the enterprise edition that has everything and so on. So, yeah, I think community contributions is a great way to go. Yeah. Actually, that would be interesting. So, uh, love to hear the Bazel mod lock file changes coming. Uh, but what I've found now that I've switched from being on the team to a customer of Bazel, uh, people are actually depending on that lock file format, and they're using it to build provenance information for their security auditors. And if it changes, it breaks their tooling. So what we need is this roadmap, and, and yeah, we should improve it, but we also have people who don't like changes. Um, and that gets into the whole that question of the distro. We've been building Docker images for people to build with everything they need, and they go, oh, what's in this? And how do you build it? <laughs> So there's a trade-off both ways. Maybe I'll say one or two things there. I, I, um, earlier, Toby emphasized that for all kinds of reasons, Google is going to need to continue to retain ownership of the core Bazel. That does not preclude, though, uh, SIGs or other maybe yes. slightly more formal mechanisms <clears throat> having a huge role in things like protocols, Maybe log formats are part of it, uh, SBOM yeah. security things. So uh, I would love to see if we can make it happen, some structure around those parts of Bazel where we need community agreement and community involvement. I think Google itself will welcome that level of, uh, you know, oh, yeah. of uh, agreement. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, um, there was a mention of uh, static types for Starlock in a, in a previous slide. Is one other user of Starlock, uh, the buck build system, use, has, a, has their own type annotations for, for Starlock. Is there any intention to converge on a single specification for static types for Starlock, or is, it, or, is that, or is that not on the cards? I think this is an open question at this point. Um, you should find Evo and talk to him, give him feedback on the current document. but. But we are also happy to talk to the bug people, for example, and figure out whether there is a common way to do stall archetyping that addresses all the needs. Just maybe add one or two things. Um, so uh, both uh, type systems are clearly grounded in the Python sort of standard type annotations. But there's a lot of details on how you use that that, that may change. Um, uh, Evo has uh, put out a, uh, a design doc that tries to articulate pretty clearly what our design goals are. Um, and uh, I'm not sure there's a, a spec at kind of that level of detail for Buck. If there is, please let us know. But I, I don't think we want to be gratuitously different. And if it can actually be shared, I think that's a great win. But we're, we're still pretty early in the process of getting our requirements straight. So um, yeah, it's on our mind. We'll, we'll, we, we want to make sure that there's not just some sort of silly divergence. Thanks. Hi. Uh, I'm going to do my best to articulate this. So um, 
I've seen the, um, the, the mentions of new sandboxing improvements in Basel 8 and the release notes draft is really exciting. Um, as a predominantly Mac OS based uh, build user, um, are, there any plan, are there any plans to improve the situation with regards to Darwin sandbox in the future? Uh, I assume you mean performance improvements? Yes. Um, yes. We, we actually spent significant amount of time this year looking into it and we'll publish a document shortly with all the things that we tried. Um, but I have bad news. Um, we did not really succeed. Okay. I, I think the document serves as a way to tell you what we tried and whether you come up with new ways. We really tried five different things, and it's, it's super hard to get this performant on Mac. Um, one way to do this would be disable sandboxing when you build locally and then enable it on CI yeah. to, to have the guarantees. Yeah, that's what we do today. Thank you. Thank you.